Hey everybody, have you ever wondered what are some of the easiest ways to create masks out of objects and materials in V-Ray? Well, if you did, then this is a tutorial for you. So we'll take a look at how you can set up masks using the multi-mat render element. Uh, we're going to do that for both the white type and the RGB type. We're going to check how you can use the object select render element to get out masks. And we're also going to take a look at the material ID based masks. First up though, let's take a look at how we can very quickly and effectively set up some masks using the multi mat render element with its type set to white. All right. So to set up our multi mat render element here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go under the V-Ray menu up here and we're going to want to bring up the render elements manager. Then we're going to uh, scroll down here until we get to the matte render element category. And since we're focusing on the multi matte render element, that's the one we're going to drag into the active render element list here. OK, then if we click on it, its properties are going to be displayed on the right here and straight off the bat here, we're going to change the mask type. We're going to change it to white. OK, then what we're also going to do uh, is we're going to uh, toggle this consider for AA toggle to on. If you don't toggle this to on, then this render element is not going to get anti aliased And in 90 plus percent of the situations, you do want your render element uh, to be considered for anti aliasing. OK, OK, so with all this set up, well, let's talk a little bit about what we want to mask out here in our scene. So let's say we wanted to mask out this entire walking house. OK, and the entire walking house is sort of nested under this one single uh, house master null. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this null. I'm going to go under the V-Ray tags uh, menu and I'm going to just pop a V-Ray object properties tag on it. Then I'm going to go under the general menu of that tag and I'm going to set the object ID here to one. You can obviously set it to any ID you want. I'm just going to go with an ID of one and then I'm going to match that ID in my multi mat render element here. So I'm going to set this one to one as well. Now with that done, I'm going to restart the interactive renderer here, or you could also uh, start up the final render. It doesn't really matter, but do know that if you're starting up, um, if you're setting up your render elements while your interactive renderer is running, you will have to stop the rendering process and restart it. Okay. Otherwise you won't see any of the changes you made to your render elements. Okay. So, uh, now let's, uh, open up this drop down here and you're going to see that we have our multi mat render element staring at us here. And if we open it up, you can see that. Well, look at that. We're masking that entire house real and nicely here. Okay. And that's how easy things are to set up using the multi mat render element. Now, what if you wanted to have more than just one single multi mat mask set up? Is that possible? Well, yeah, it is. So let's take a look at how we can set that up next here. All right. So generally speaking, you have two different ways on how you can approach uh, the task at hand here. But before you do anything, really, it's really wise to go and you name your existing render elements accordingly, just so things don't get too confusing. So we have our multi mat render element here. It contains only the house, right? So let's give this one a more descriptive name. So let's call it the multi mat house render element. All right. Right now, if we want to mask something else in the scene out, so for example, all the flora, right? So the trees and all the vegetation and all that. Well, to do that, we can just bring in another multi mat render element. We can just drag it from the uh, render element list there. OK, and then we can proceed to set it up so that it includes the flora. That's one way you can do that. Or alternatively, what you can also do is you can just take the existing render element and you can hold on control or command if you are on Mac and you just duplicate it. OK, now either way, you know, you want to set it up accordingly to the to the to the thing you want to mask out. So let's give this multi mat render element here a more descriptive name. We're going to call the multi mat flora render element. And then we're going to um, take this existing object uh, properties tag here. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to put it on that flora null there. OK, because all, the, all that vegetation, all that flora is encompassed in this single null object here. And uh, let's also make sure that the object ID is set to two. So something different than that house ID. And let's match that in our multi mat flora render element as well. Okay. Then we can restart the rendering process. 
And we're just gonna speed up through the rendering part here. Um, it is a complex scene and we obviously don't want you to needlessly wait around, okay? All right, and here we go. So if we now check our render elements that we have available, you can see that we have our multi mat house render element, which uh, kind of encompasses the entire house, right? And then we also have the multi mat flora render element, which encompasses, well, all the vegetation, all the flora in our scene, right? And so that's how easy that is to set up. All right. But now the multimat render element has another type mode. Right now we use the white type mode, but there's also an RGB type mode and it comes with some additional possibilities on how you can set up masks. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at next. Okay. So to set that up, what we're going to do here is we're just going to take another multimat render element. We're going to put it into the active render element list here, but this time around, we're not going to change its mask type here to white. We're just going to keep it set to separate channels. Now we definitely want to consider this render element uh, for anti-aliasing. So, so let's definitely toggle that to on. And now, now our focus is going to be on these um, IDs here. Okay. So we have a red ID, a green ID and a blue ID and the IDs we input in here. Well, that's, those are going to be the different colored channels, basically that are all going to be part of this one multimat render element. So just for example, our house is an ID of one. If we put it, um, if we put the red ID here to one, well, then this multi mat render element is going to contain a mask of that house in that red channel. Okay. And now if we, for example, because we have uh, our flora ID, oh, we have an ID set for all our flora in our scene here. We have a, an object ID for it. If we just set uh, this one to be the green ID. Okay. So we're going to input the, uh, the flora object ID into the green ID field here. So like that. Well, now all the flora is going to be green and all of these, both of these basically are going to be inside this one single multimat render element. So if that sounds a little bit confusing, let's take a look at how the end result looks like. And it's going to make a ton of sense in a second. All right. So here we are back in action. And if we just take a look at our render element, our multimat render element, you can see now that the house that we've inputted into that red ID sort of input field, as you can see, the house is now has this red mask to it. Uh, the flora, which we inputted into our green ID here, well, that one has a green mask to it. And all of these are residing inside this one single multimat render element. Okay. And that's how you can use the multimat render element with its mask type set to separate channels. You can have different object IDs inside this one mask here. Okay. Now, one thing that we did kind of not set up optimally here is we haven't named this multimat render element properly. So let's just give it a proper name just because this is really good practice. Okay. So let's, uh, let's call the house and flora render element. Okay. Cause that's really important because if you don't do that, well, then you're just going to end up with a bunch of multimat render elements or whatever render elements you're using, and you're not going to have a good idea of what each and every one of these do. Okay. Okay, cool. So now we know how to set up masks using the multimat render element and everything's being driven by the object properties tag, right? Right. But did you know that if you go into your uh, multimat render elements properties, uh, you have this ID source parameter in there. And if you change it to multimat ID, well, then you can uh, have your masks be driven by your materials. And just so we don't get things confused here, the multimat ID we are talking about is not the multimat ID render element. It's the multimat ID that resides inside your materials properties. Okay. So just a little bit of a clarification on that, just so we don't get too confused. All right. So to set up your multimat IDs, well, uh, you can just bring in another multimat render element in here. Okay. And, uh, pretty much well you have to do all that basic stuff so first you want to consider it for anti-aliasing and for the mask type you can go with separate channels or you can go with the white only uh, i'm going to go with white just because it's going to make a little bit more sense for me here and now the most important thing to get the multimat ids going uh for you is going to be the multimat um well it's going to be this id source uh, toggle here so you want to toggle it from object id to multimat id okay uh, then you want to bring up your materials here um, and let's say we want to single out this legs 
material. So we're going to go under its options menu and we're going to enable the material ID for it. And then as you can see, we get access to the multimat ID uh, input field here. So let's give this an ID of three and then let's also match it in our render element here. Let's also name our render element properly here. So let's call the leg material. Okay. Um, or if we're being more precise, the multimat leg material render element. That's how we're going to call it. And that's pretty much all that there is to it. So now what we're basically doing is, is we're saying that this multimat render element is going to be entirely driven uh, by this material. So it's going to be masking out this material, wherever this material is applied, basically. Okay, so let's stop the rendering process here and start it back up. And here we go. Let's check out this newly created render element. If we just... Um, you know, if we just select it, as you can see, now we have a mask that's being entirely driven uh, by this material. So wherever this material is applied in our scene, well, we're masking that thing out. Okay. All right. Awesome. That's pretty much all that there is to the multimat render element. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the object select render element. And with it, you can also get masks out really quickly and really efficiently, plus Along with those masks, you can also get isolated beauty images of the object or material that you're masking out. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at next here. All right. So we're going to go under that beauty menu again, render elements manager, and we're going to this time around, we're going to bring in the object select render element. OK, now we do want to consider it for anti-aliasing. You definitely want to toggle that to on. Um, and then uh, you can also denoise it if you so want to. We're going to opt for that. You don't have to, obviously. Now, the most important parameter for us here is going to be this ID parameter. So let's first set up an ID on our house master null here. So we're just going to bring in a V-Ray object properties tag. We're going to go under its general menu. And in here, we're going to set the object ID to one. Now we're going to match the ID in our render element here to one. And it's always a wise idea, you know, to name things properly because you can stag these. So let's call this one house master. And then if we just duplicate this object, select render element, uh, give it a different ID and give it a different name. So maybe we could have an object select set up for our flora here as well. So let's go with flora. And then we also obviously need to set up that object property stack for the flora null there. So let's give it an ID of two, right? And now all we have to do is we just need to restart or start up the rendering process. All right. And so here we go. If we go uh, and uh, open up this drop down here, you're going to be able to see that now we have a bunch of different object select render elements in here. So if we just open up the sort of the main one, the object select house master one, you're going to be able to see that this is basically a beauty image that's not color mapped, not tone mapped. It's basically a linear uh, image. Uh, of just our isolated object. But now this is not a mask, right? So if you want to get access to the mask, you want to take a look at uh, these additional object select uh, render elements that got uh, created here. So for example, the house master filter, which is a filtered version of the mask. And then you also have an alpha version of the same mask. And so that's how the object select render element works. Uh, you get this beauty image, and then you also get these masks with it right? Now, in case you are a little bit confused as to what the differences are between the filtered render element and the alpha render element, well, the uh, filtered render element has anti-aliasing applied to it, whereas the alpha one doesn't. And so in 90% of the situations or more, you're probably going to want to use the filtered version, okay? Now, one additional cool thing about the object select render element is that you have this IDs selection mode in here. Now, by default, it's set to single ID, which means you can just input a single ID number in here. But you can change this selection mode to, for example, a range of IDs. So you have a uh, range start ID. So let's, for example, set it to two. And then you have a range end ID. You can set it, for example, to 10. And now, all of the IDs going, well, uh, including 2 and 10 and everything in between, all of those IDs are going to be in encompassed into this one single object select render element here. And uh, you can also change the ID selection mode here to custom IDs if you so want to. So now you can just go in and you can input your custom IDs uh, any way you see fit, right? And so uh, all of these um, 
all these IDs then are going to be driving this render element essentially. All right. Okay. So similarly to how the multi mat render element was able to be driven by materials, uh, well, so can the object select render element be driven by the materials. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at next here. All right. So to set things up here, uh, we're going to first bring in another object select render element. And this time around, we're going to call it the legs material object select render element. Um, we're going to consider it for anti-aliasing, obviously. And then we're also going to toggle the denoiser to on uh, just because why not? And now if you want this object select render element to be driven by the multi mat IDs that live inside your materials, what you ought to do is you ought to change the ID source here from object ID to multi mat ID. And now this ID input field here becomes your multi mat ID field. So now all you have to do is you need to go under your materials properties under its options menu. And in here you want to toggle the material IDs to on. Then you set your multi mat ID to whatever value you prefer. We're going to go with number three. You set the same ID in your render element and then you just restart the rendering process. And that's really all that there is to it. If we now expand this drop down here, you're going to be able to see that uh, now we have our object select legs material render element here, and it's being entirely driven by that material that we've specified in our render element. Right on, people. We're making good progress here, but there's still one more render element that we're going to want to check here, and that is the material ID render element. And as the name suggests, this one is also being driven by materials. Uh, but then on top of, well, just being driven by materials, you can very easily define the color of the mask just by simply playing around with this one single material ID parameter. Let's take a look at how that works next year. All right. So to set up our material IDs here, we're just going to again go under that V-Ray menu. We're going to bring up the render elements manager. And this time around, we're going to activate the material ID render element. We're going to consider it for anti-aliasing and we're also going to denoise it because why not? Then I'm going to restart the rendering process here. And while the renderer is starting up, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and I'm going to select my, well, for example, my body material here. I'm going to go under its options menu here and I'm going to enable the material IDs for it. And now the key parameter for us in here is going to be the material ID parameter. And right now it's set to this black color. And if we open up our material ID render element here, you can see that it's completely black. But if we uh, switch up the color here for our material ID parameter to, well, anything but complete, but a complete black color, well, then you're going to be able to see that once the render refreshes, well, look at that. We're masking out that material with this color that we set in here. And it's going to become extra powerful when you're trying to mask out a lot of different materials. So uh, you can, we can, for example, go into our legs material here. We can uh, enable those material IDs and we can give this material ID. Well, we could give it a white color or we could give it a totally different color, for example. Okay. So something like that maybe. And if we now, again, just wait for the renderer to sort of refresh here, you can see that now we, this way we can very easily mask out all the different materials using our own custom colors very easily and uh, very straightforwardly. All right. And that just about covers all the basic ways you can set up masks in V-Ray. With these techniques, you should be able to very easily generate masks that you can then bring over to your post-production tools of choice, where, you know, you can use these masks to mask things out. And that's it for this one. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We hope you've learned something new here. And if you have any comments, criticism, or suggestions for future tutorials, do let us know in the comments below or over on our forums. Again, thank you for tuning in. We hope you learned something new. And as always, take care, everybody.